Okay, next we're going to talk about the mixer. Here is the mixer. All of the knobs in the mixer section are actually divided. So while it looks like a four channel mixer, it's actually a nine channel mixer. Uh, most of the knobs have different functions, right or left. And one of the knobs has one function to the left and two functions to the right. And that's the knob right here at the top that we're gonna talk about right now. If we turn the top knob to the left, we're gonna turn up the volume of whatever you have plugged into the second external input. If we turn the knob to the right, uh, this uh, switch here decides between two different functions that this knob could be controlling. Right now we have it set to the squiggly, which is a noise wave. So we're actually hearing that noise wave um, going through the filter, which has an envelope on it right now. We can also set this to sequence. And then what it controls, um, as far as I can tell, if you have the sequencer set to be triggered by VCO2, which is an audio range oscillator, audio range oscillator triggering the steps of the sequencer, causing it to uh, move between the steps at an audio rate, which is a very fast rate, turns the sequencer into a wave shape generator, which is totally bizarre. But when you have this set to sequencer and it's set up in the right way, this turns up the volume of that. It's a very weird sound. And then as you change the voltages for the different steps, it changes aspects of the timbre of that sound. And makes for some very weird stuff. But that's what this top knob controls. The next knob down is the control for the volumes of the sub oscillators. Uh, there's a sub oscillator for oscillator one and a sub oscillator for oscillator two. If we turn to the left, we're gonna get the sub oscillator for oscillator one, uh, which generates uh, a square wave an octave below what oscillator one is set to. This is the squarest sounding of the square waves on the synthesizer. So if you're just looking for a square wave oscillator, here you go. I have this tune kind of high right now, but we can turn that down so that it sounds actually like a sub oscillator. And if we turn to the right, we're gonna get two octaves below whatever oscillator two is set to which gets very, very low. But in any case, depending on the sound that you're making, um, using the sub oscillator can generate a serious low end uh, when you need it. Next down, we have two things that you already know about. To the left of the next knob is VCO1's sawtooth. To the right is VCO1's square wave. To the left of the next knob, sawtooth of oscillator two. To the right is the square wave of oscillator two. We've already heard those. Next, we have the extremely rich, heavy, juicy filter of the Leipzig S. Let's have a listen. We'll just put one sawtooth wave through it. These oscillators are thick, fat oscillators, and this filter is a thick, fat filter. So the result you get is quite a rich, intensely fat sound. Uh, we also have emphasis, which is resonance. Let's put some of that on there. A little 
little bit more. Again, extremely rich Moog-esque filter. And it does self-oscillate. And you can use key tracking to get it, uh, get that self-oscillation to track the keys to a degree. Um, yeah, it's probably going to take you a while or me or anyone a while to line it up perfectly, but uh, you get the idea. Okay, so that is key track, but we also have another function of key track, which is basically having the keys uh, control the filter cutoff point so that the lower notes are darker and the higher notes are brighter. This thing is so fat. Now below that, we also have, now this is, this is a unique function. We have another one of those dual function knobs. And on this one, you know, usually in synthesizers, you have a dedicated envelope to the filter, or you have a single envelope, which not only controls the amp, but also controls the filter. In this case, in the case of this synthesizer, we have two envelopes and neither are particularly dedicated to one thing, although there are dedicated functions. But for example, you have the ability to decide whether it's envelope one that's going to control the filter or envelope two. Turning to the left will give you envelope one. And the amount. Turning to the right will give you envelope two. So you can decide which uh, envelope is gonna control the filter. And that's really handy, not only because it allows you to choose between two different envelopes, but it also allows you to switch back and forth between them if you're in a performance or something similar. And that is really cool. In addition to that, we can also control the filter with modulation, which we will get to in the modulation section. Uh, the sequencer can also be used to control the filter cutoff point of the filter, but we will cover that when we get to the sequencer. <laughs> 